Thank you very much. I think after the extensive and wealthy and uh, discussion by the three distinguished speakers, I have to navigate into my knowledge mm. to find any attractive discussion point to come to you. <laughs> Two professors and one ambassadors and a layman like myself. Where shall I go? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let us admit that the religious institutions and the faith-based organizations are among the first responders. This is number one. If they are, they have a role to play. And this role has to be identified by them because they are the people who know the community better than actually the international community when they only come for a response to a, a, a conflict or natural disaster. Challenges. Challenges that we make and we meet in this area is mixing cards between humanitarian and non-humanitarian. I gave some practical examples and there was well as I will just talk about one or two or three challenges. One of the most important challenges that we are facing is that the whole world is suffering from something called religious phobia. Mm -hmm. They don't only talk about Islamophobia, it is a religious phobia. You see, the professor from New York was talking about secularism. I believe that secularism is a new way of life. Is that right? And it's a new religion. Why don't you find a doctrine for it and identify the prophets that actually they are preaching and the messengers of secularism or communism or others? I'm just trying to challenge the, the, uh, the philosophical discussion of religion and other uh, uh, beliefs. When we look at the media and this negative perception of religion, whether there's a phobia or not, and the value of the teaching of the prophets and messengers of God, who become like a joke among the society members or the citizen, whether they are in a conflict zone or a disaster stricken area or normal society. These are the facts of life that surrounding us, whether we are preaching as a religious institution or whether we are responding as faith-based organization to the needs of the people. Mixing cards coming from mixing humanitarian response with proselytization on conversion. I, myself, will say this is an act against humanity. When you convert the most vulnerable individual to any kind of religion, you have the right to be good to everybody. But you do not have the right to convert the youngsters or the vulnerable women and sick people to another religion. And this is actually a challenge for us. Respect and disrespect, trust and mistrust, it is there. If I'm a Muslim working in a non-Muslim area, they will, mistrust, they will not trust me because of my background. I give an example, the word Red Cross among the Arabs and Muslims it is a proselytization organization. I have to fight and in the discussion. It is not a cross. It's not religious. It's, no, 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 no. They put the Bible inside the, 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 the food bags, <laughs> inside underneath the blanket, whatever it is. The, because, because the word cross and it's a part of the lack of education to the, the other communities in, in these areas. When we look at another area, we're we working, actually, I don't like to name, shall I name countries or no need? Mm. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, fine, thank you, okay. <laughs> when I used to have the privilege of, uh, to be the president of Islamic Leaf, we had a very, very extensive operation in Chechnya. We did not do any, any, any religious activity whatsoever. But somebody of the security came and told us, you are preaching, trying to spread Islam. I said, how? To the local officer. Mm. I said, because of your logo. Mm. 
So, okay, fine. What do you want us to do? We can remove the logo. No, 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 no. It's not only because of your logo. Because of the name of your officer. His name is Muhammad or Ali or Mahmoud. <laughs> See how deep the phobia at the back of the mind of the security officers or the intelligence or the government officers facing the religious or faith-based organization. When we went to, I love South Sudan. Do you love it? Mm. Huh? Mm. Yeah. I do. I do do. Mm. You do do, I do as well. Mm. <laughs> we have to choose the first project to implement in Warab, 2003. Have to think very, very seriously. It's a, dominant, a Christian dominant uh, 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 the majority area and... Uh, and there's no many Muslims living there. And we have to work in water project. Because we did not want to touch health. We did not want to touch definitely education. But even so, one of the organizations was trying to spread something at our back. Who was protecting Islamic relief in Warab in South Sudan was the local authority. He said, we know them. And we know what they are doing. Leave them alone. So we want the trust of another non-Muslim uh, 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 government in a, in, a, in a conflict zone. This is very, very important, which come back to transparency. If we don't want to put transparency on the table, there's a mistrust and disrespect. Okay? Mistrust and disrespect is on both sides. In Afghanistan, because when I was, my, short was, uh, my beard was short, I was stopped on the road between Kabul and Pakistan to the border. This man has got a very short beard. Stop him! And the car was on the side of the road. In spite of the fact, this actually the different mentality of the people in the area, even from the same faith. I said, where does he come from? He said, he's, a, he's an Arab. He said, okay, if he was not an Arab, we could have put him in jail. You know, this kind of misunderstanding of the religious values and misunderstanding of the value of the community, okay, and not respecting the local culture, okay, it's very, very, very important to understand. So, we are very traditional as a religious institution. I think you talked about capacity building, your uh, ambassador and the professor in, in America talk about capacity building, and I'm not going to repeat it again, okay? But actually, uh, a humanization of the religion institu this institution and the faith-based organization. We need to do more, more and more and more and more. The language you speak should not be the language of congregation should be the language of the community, which includes secular, different denomination, and people who has nothing to do with religion. Because the money, by the way, is not the money of the Order of Malta. It's not the money of World Vision. It's not the money of Islamic Relief or Muslim Aid. It is the money of the poor. The people who employ us are those Pool, poor people, miserably looking, children with running nose, sticky eyes, and barefoot, who cannot afford to live like we live, to eat like we eat, to drink like we drink, and to have dwelling like our dwelling, education to our children, different to their education, and we're still talking about them as a religious institution and faith-based organization. No! It is their money, and who are their employees. This is one of the foundation for all of us as faith-based organization, to know that we are employed by the sick, by the orphan, by the poor, by the widows, and by displaced and refugees. Come back to our philosophy of thinking outside secularism, outside religious, outside faith, as humanitarian workers. I need to, to stop me because I sometimes I, I, mm -hmm. if you could conclude, that would be very I will do. I'll. When we went to another Muslim country, I don't want to mention its name. Okay, fine. <laughs> Our Muslim majority country, we have to choose 
and then Dawa project because of the high security clamping. So we've chosen to work with the early born handicapped children because we cannot convert them to Islam or Christianity and others. And we managed to sustain the operation in this country for 10 years. Uh, in Achi, just to conclude with Achi, I was there uh, after Christmas and before New Year. When I was coming back, I read something written on the, one of the gates of the airport. Please stop taking our children away. Hmm. It is, and this has been done by faith-based organization. Ten days after the earth, the tsunami, sorry. And when I went to Jakarta, the discussion was how many children has been taken away? Why? These are challenges on us. We have to deal with it. And I thank you very much for allowing me to be with you in this August or August? Yes. August. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm using the technology by making the, what do you call it, <laughs> selfie video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.